there are so many cool applications out there. I mean, good Lord. Dude. How many app videos can I make called is blank better than notion before you guys realize that that is just a great way to get clicks. But outside of that, I am actually asking the question because I do want to see whether people think things are better than notion because I am not biased. I make money off the thing, but other things are better to other people's preferences. So I want to point that out. And in this one, we're going to look at Nimbus note. So there are things that are within the stack of the Nimbus platform, like Nimbus capture, Nimbus clipper. But for the purposes of this one, we're going to talk about Nimbus note getting started on the price it's not bad. It's pretty good. Um, you, you get the pro version for $3.9 a month. This is probably a Cyber Monday sale <laughs> based on when I'm recording this, but it's $6 a month outside of that uh, for an annual option and then $8 a month if you go for monthly. But you can go lifetime and buy business 10 for $14.99 or you can buy business 5 for $9.99. And the thing is, this is a freemium software that has the business options on top of it. So that's kind of what you're seeing there. The free version gives you unlimited devices and allows you to create notes, bring your data to one place and collaborate with others. So it's really fine to use on the free plan. You actually do get the Nimbus Clipper and Nimbus Clarity on top of it, but there's nothing wrong with going for a more premium option in some circumstances where it applies to you. Taking a quick look at this application, we'll see that it does have a pretty interesting feel to it. You can sort of change the alignment on both of these to a certain extent. You can hide the sidebar as well if you want. And it has, and it has almost a craft-esque feel to this sidebar where there's folders and whatnot. However, something that it has over craft is tags. Tags are something that a lot of people struggle with not having on applications and this one does. And it also has a dedicated task section, unlike what Craft has, as this could be considered a Notion or Craft competitor with it having Markdown. And if we look just at a base functionality of it, I'm going to make a new page and show you a little bit of what it's got. So it's very similar in the sense that you can put an emoji on the top, does not have the black and white emojis as Notion does or Craft. And you can give it a little color mark there and you can add tags to the top here. So examples for YouTube would be one right here. And then it gives you an option to use a template or add databases with options. So this is pretty cool. I'm going to take add database with options and just take a look at what different things that you can do here. So right off the bat, I mean, they're, they got a progress bar that's interactive. Notion doesn't have that. That's very cool. Um, if you're interested in doing something like that for sure. And it's got basic text box boxes, date properties. And then let's see, we just added another one. We can change the column types to a fair amount of different things. So in column types, we'll see that there's yeah, single select, multi-select mentions, collaborators, progress. Very interesting here. There is no formula from what I can tell. However, there are sortings. sortings. Um, there's even formatting within here, which is cool. Um, you can change the text color within this to be a certain color. So say I change the formatting here, be pink, say bold here as well. And then that would actually be specific to that column. So very interesting in the fact that little bit of Excel functionality I'm feeling here too. So if I click on this one, shift, yep. If I hold shift and control, I can move around this much easier than I can in Notion tables. So that's very cool. And the bottom here does have a lot of the similar things that exist within Notion where there's like a formula going on over here. So I can do percent checked as well. You can count them, say how many exist, how many are empty, all those sort of different options. So it's definitely cool that you can see that this is almost a mix between what you see with a lot of database tables and uh, Excel functionality too at the same time. You can then go to the left here and similar to the, the six dots in Notion, there's like an add block and uh, section over here. Now, one of my very annoying things is I can't right click. Why not? <laughs> Right clicking, they just don't like me in these apps, huh? And something that's a quick note over here is that you can almost just add tasks to the right here, which is a very simple task example. And it can almost be a nice little checklist going on while you're taking notes. Let's see if we can do backslash. We can, we can do backslash database and there's table options. The different views that exist are just one right now, but it's possible that they could be adding more in the future. And if I didn't want to edit this at all, I could actually lock this block, which is pretty cool. Now this is cool as well because it's got that column set up. It's got the baseline of a lot of different things. Uh, it gives you cool suggestions. There's audio recordings and there's even some integration 
frustrations evidently within here. It almost feels like a hybrid between what Craft and Notion are at the same time. And I definitely appreciate the fact that it goes to town on all these different things and has, you know, a lot of the different things like section breaks, columns, and uh, apparently even buttons within here, which is cool. This seems to be more of an aesthetic option to hyperlink something, but it's a unique thing that I haven't quite seen in Notion. While you can make callouts and whatnot, you're not really able to do something like this. Hint seems to be like a callout block. Bookmark seems to be an option to paste hyperlinks. And just out of curiosity, I'm going to drop a Google Drive link in here. Let's go to my account and actually have this, it has this native option. It seems like it's loading what's in here. Okay. Wow. That's cool. So let's take an example within here. Okay. And while it doesn't have like a play option, I can click on it pretty easily and I didn't have to leave that within here. So that's pretty cool. I won't complain about the integrations that exist so far because maybe the Google Sheets are an option to just straight up embed. Let's do Google Sheets. I will say it's not exactly searchable. So that's a little frustrating. Yeah, that's that's I'm not going to look through all that. That's ridiculous. Um, I wish it did have a search functionality, but it's got a baseline start to it. It has a toggle block, which is not something that every application has that is like this in Markdown. So kudos to them on that. And it does come in with baseline templates right here. So if I press marketing brief, it'll give me this option. If I press use template, pop it right in there. It should prompt me right back into my Nimbus node. Note, you'll see the website de design be brief pops right in. So it does have a very nice, cute aesthetic to it and can switch between light and dark theme very easily. It's got that old Notion-esque color prior to their really dark chain and even has a what's new section over here on the left, which is pretty cute. Also, from what I can tell, the Nimbus chat is something that they're trying to really push here so that you can have a native chat application similar to what Task 8 is doing. And when you first do it, it prompts this like, all right, initializing the chat to run your organization and then you can get going with it. And it works very similar to what you'd see. You could have different channels and you can type out different things within here. There are, doesn't seem to be any emojis within this, but they are actually integrating video calls within this too. So they're really trying to make like a note version almost of what Tascade's got going on, which is pretty cool. It even has the activity panel that's very similar to what you see in Todoist. It's like a hodgepodge of different applications. I kind of like it. When it comes to sorting within folders, you are able to move folders within folders and then it kind of showcases it like this, similar to what maybe you'd see in one note, which is kind of cute. But if you drop this down, you can also navigate things in different ways by sorting it like this, changing it from compact to detailed to comfortable. And then if you just hover over this, it'll show you that again. You can also navigate through folders right here too. And then if we press control F, it will bring up a search functionality that's within here. So if I look in here and type we've gathered, it'll pop this within here. Now it doesn't seem like you're actually able to search between multiple notes, but I might be wrong on this. Something also cool that you can do within here is have a full width page, like what you see with the Notion, but you also have this interesting focus mode. So whatever you're clicked on from a block perspective, you're actually going to only really see that colored in and everything else will be faded out. So obviously you can have that on or off, but it is a cool option in order for you to kind of get more focused in on the work that you're doing. If you like this Nimbus note review, let me know what other apps you want me to review on this channel and check out more videos like this and how to improve your productivity even more.